the dynamic island is by far the most discussed thing in new iPhones. Some people hate it, others love it. What looks like an interesting take on notches and cutouts is by many seen as a software workaround of a design ignorance. Hole punch cutouts have been around for ages and we all were expecting Apple to make the next big leap forward. However, it turned out to be an expertly executed bad idea. So in this video I'll tell you about everything that's wrong about the Dynamic Island. First, you don't need to be an eagle to see that the Dynamic Island is taking up more space than the notch ever did. Minutes after the release, we saw schematics that showed how obtrusive and space-hungry the Dynamic Island really is. I thought this island was supposed to be more subtle than the notch and take less space. In reality, it just made things worse. With the iPhone 14 Pro, you're constantly reminded about that black pill. Even with the smaller cutout relatively to the notch, it still takes up more space. Because who would even use those pixels above? Other people point out that the Dynamic Island will be present for only a couple of generations. Min Chi Kuo claims that the first iPhone without a hole will arrive in 2024. So it may seem like giving us an intermediary design just to boost sales was Apple's plan all along. And just look how happy he is! And now everyone who buys the 15 Pro this year will look like an absolute fool when the 16 Pro launches. Apple's basically saying, forgive and forget. So if the Dynamic Island is not here to stay, its limited functionality starts making a lot of sense. Users are also excessively complaining about the sheer implementation of this feature. It seemingly is flawed in its nature. For example, the timer app works with the Dynamic Island, but the stopwatch doesn't. Both are built-in Apple-made apps. Other apps mysteriously disappear from the island without being seen again. Some people even have two cutouts instead of one. I am not even talking about a laughably small number of supported apps. Another huge problem for many people is reachability. Modern iPhones are already huge and having a feature that constantly requires you to stretch your hand is totally unnecessary. Some people even call it a UX mistake. So if you don't have big hands, there's a chance that you won't even use this feature. For you it will still just be a distraction. A distraction you can't ignore. But if you manage to reach it, you'll be constantly leaving a ton of nasty fingerprints. It won't damage your device in any way, but will add an extra step of wiping the camera area clean before taking a selfie. So is the Dynamic Island solving any problems or simply adding more? As I said, you can't ignore it. It's always there. A black hole staring right at you. And it's alive. It changes size and shape. It's full of animations and life. Every notification, call, unlocking, music listening or even Apple Pay will be seen. And you can't even turn it off. It's a classic Apple move. Don't hide the mistakes, make them your signature thing. The notch? Check. The triple camera? Check. The dynamic island? Check. And probably the biggest problem is the usability and the necessity of the dynamic island. This abomination is not changing the game, it just changes the mask. You still have the same notifications, but now they're fused to this one area. Apple's intention was creating something for tracking small and short activities, and it's not fit for any big picture stuff. Apple is saying that the dynamic island updates only when needed, but it doesn't make things easier. It's always there, even when you have no notifications. If you ask me, I find certain use cases simply stupid. How can you navigate the streets when all the directions you get are little pop-ups and miniature icons? With such navigation experience, I am not surprised that Apple has added satellite connectivity and crash detection. The dynamic island will show you the route to the grave. And all those small things like timers or changing the music. Doesn't it look stupid to you? Reaching the hole, holding a finger on it, waiting for animations to play out, just to change a song? With the control center, your music controls are one swipe away. I don't want to be too negative about it. There's a lot of potential in this idea, but it would require a lot of tweaking to really unlock its powers. With right incentives for developers, it could become the real signature feature that is totally worth having. But for now, it's more of a gimmick. A gimmick to refresh the look and boost sales, nothing more.